Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Why am I so cheerful today? I don't know. Because be it's spring. spring. Yeah, 60 degrees. <laughs> so welcome to another edition of Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Robert Winters. And, and I'm guest, guest uh, co-host, Judy Nathans. That's right. You know, yeah. just uh, it's, it's nice. It's nice I'm that we have. I'm a I like well, the feeling. It, yeah. It's good to have. It's always yeah. good to have a plan yeah. B. This right. is good. Because <laughs> I'm so busy that I, you know, yeah. No. Yeah. That anyway, was nice so, to do. Yeah. So uh, it is now officially springtime. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, at f I was just joking around prior to the city yeah, council meeting. I saw meeting, that on your site. Saying that spring begins, the equinox is at 5 24 p.m. And yeah. six minutes later, the city council will, oh, right. <laughs> will, will go into uh, their Zoom room. Yeah. Head into their Zoom, land yeah. of Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. So, and by the way, so uh, the uh, there was this Cambridge City Council meeting last night. Mm -hmm. but um not in person no this one was by design uh scheduled to be entirely remote in zoom mm -hmm. and the reason pretty clearly was because there were several items on the agenda that related to matters uh involving cambridge police department right. the um proposed uh alternative um response right. model you know right. that goes by the acronym of heart, heart. Mm -hmm. uh and very just basically various things that were police related and as many of you know um there's been sort of an ongoing protest that has been going on now since in january so i guess yes. it's two months now yes where uh january 4th is when it happened yeah, so so you know, in the wake of this um off what I guess they call it the officer involved shooting, um that um they call it know, a killing. They're calling it killing. Well, you know, it's interesting the, re yeah. the the rhetoric goes around. I've you know, yeah. you know, it's it's even during public comment, I thought to myself, yeah. well, if you actually want to convince yeah. city administration uh to do things that you want, or if you want city councils yeah. to come on board along with you, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily in your best interest to yeah. rhetorically referred yeah. to the uh the the police yeah. murder of somebody because then yeah, you're already basically killing. i know it you're basically puts it making, in a whole different context yeah yeah i mean you're, you're you're basically declaring that you've already adjudicated the entire matter and That's you've right. decided this is what it is in which case right. you're not actually giving testimony to make any kind of request at that point right. you know <laughs> so anyway it's it's a it is a matter of of some uh i guess um uh, significance right at this very moment right uh, I believe over at Cambridge City Hall there was uh, the same group which is organ it is or it's not exclusively consisting of but is organized by an entity that calls itself the party for socialism and liberation mm -hmm. but they've been basically recruiting students from various area colleges um, you know to who are uh, you know interested in changing policing in one form or another I, yeah I, but it's I, also the bangladeshi community of police students there i think that there's also, yeah. you know i think in the the initial uh people who showed up in uh, early january after yeah. the this the the incident uh-huh um, I think you, you saw a lot of people from this um, bangladesh community but since then you you when you really look at it, what you're really seeing is there's a lot of just student organizing going on now yes you know and uh so it's you know and it's kind of the gen z thing is a, is a you know socialism sells so, so they are very willing to trust this group as somehow being informed and helpful and whatever so but they they had a big crowd over at city hall i believe right now uh well, because uh, there there was or did have a meeting with uh, the city manager earlier today. Right. So they had made it quite clear that their intention was to occupy City Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, and in response to that, the the city has actually installed uh, uh, cameras in all public areas of City Hall now. They went up rather quickly. That, wait a minute. Is that going against the surveillance? Uh, uh, they it, they have been they have given assurances that it most certainly does not go against it it's being declared oh, but it will certainly have to be part of any future inventory that is reported under the ordinance to the city council but, right uh, just the fact that you use i mean i'm glad they're doing it i think there's places all around the country where there have been such uh commotions at city council school committee meetings where you have to have cameras somebody could get killed i mean maybe not in cambridge but someone could get hurt you know and yeah. you want to see it 
Yeah, no, I I, I agree. You it's a, it's completely appropriate. It's it's unfortunate that it's come to I this, know. you know, know, but but it's the modern world, and I guess it's just we have to accept that this is the way it is. Um, you know, to me, it's completely. I mean, I'm sort of dumbfounded that uh, things would reach the point where this group thinks that they can somehow occupy City Hall, you know, based on. I I'd like to know what I mean. I know different jurisdictions, different towns, and release names and all, but. What is the point? What what is gained by releasing a name? We go after them. I, I don't get it. Obviously, there's a person involved in this who is going under a lot of scrutiny and stuff. So why? What is the advantage of releasing the name? You know, the, the, when you read statements from like the mayor, our mayor, yeah. I know she uh, doesn't who, agree with who, me. Know. who does not agree with the city administration, yeah. but I think there may be a little bit more involved in there, basically, mm -hmm. maybe even intertwined with questions of changing the charter, where there seems to be some assertion of wouldn't it be better if we had a strong mayor who oh, could who just controls the police department. Yeah, who could just sort of do this ah. and have our way. So I think there's a, I mean, I'm just interpreting this perhaps, but I'm not the only one who has said it. Yeah, There yeah, seems to yeah. be a little bit of testing going on there, yeah. uh, that that's part of that rhetoric so that you'll see a, a statement from the city manager and then the following day, there'll be a statement from the mayor and whatever. Right. I don't know that this is necessarily uh, yeah. entirely just to sort of address the situation so much as it is yeah, to- it's question point out authority. That there's systemic problems or whatever if we had to yeah I don't know right. all I know well, is that it's it's unfortunate and I think they're doing the best they can but well never, my my yeah. whole point I mean I I completely understand why they wanted to um prevent even bigger troubles yeah you know uh, I mean if if you have a um moderate size group that wants to occupy city hall mm -hmm. uh would they feel any disinclination toward occupying the front the lawn of an department. officer oh, yeah. or the police department or going to the home of the officers involved and right. picketing I mean, and, all and that would get public harassing right. them yeah i know and honestly th those would be fundamentally stupid things to do yeah. Yeah. but it, it wouldn't surprise me in the least if that's what they were choosing to do but it's, well, it's the policy of the police department. I mean, we have policies, and one of them is you don't release the names. I mean, other cities do it differently, but that, that's yeah. right. And that is so. the, that's the that is the policy. And it, but it's it's not okay. like it was a long-standing established policy because it's this is not something that comes up. It happens all the. I know it was twenty years ago. Yeah, and I think years. I think the commissioner basically said it well, said, which is, is that if there was uh, at least initially some compelling evidence of wrongdoing, right. yes. then they would have actually released the name and been very upfront about right. that but the thing is preliminary findings did not suggest yeah. that yeah. so they didn't think it was appropriate to basically um sort of try somebody in, in the court of so, public so protest you're saying that, that maybe in other words if there had been a lot of complaints against this particular person or maybe it was a rogue cop that maybe they yeah, were it, willing it, to release the name is that yeah yes saying? no i that's believe i believe that's exactly what the commissioner yeah. said so that yeah. if it was but, you know, but, you know, it's like it's a judgment call, right? Sure. I mean, if, you know, and there are certainly cases where, uh, where everybody, everybody knows somebody really went over the top and, and, right. and, and cut right. across all, right. all standards, all training right. and did something fundamentally well, wrong. We've seen it. We've seen it. With we've George, seen it. Uh, George Floyd. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. This, yeah. Right. But every there's, day there's something today about people getting, I mean, it's just right. horrendous. So, there, but, and, so there's yeah. no initial indications that right. of that it may turn out to be the case that there was wrongdoing, but you know, that's what for, people have to, to be wait determined. for that because exactly. there are people being very careful Right. You know, in, in determining these sorts of things. Now, in the meantime, yeah. there are certain changes within mm -hmm. the police department that right. actually are, you know, we, we sort of have wanted all along anyway. Sure. Like, for example, um, the use of body cameras. Body cameras, right. You know? That was one of um, the agenda items uh, under city manager. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I mean, and I'm sure city councilors can and have complained, well, why didn't we move on this sooner? And yeah. You know, I don't know why. Maybe, maybe because we just did, uh, there was no compelling need, even yeah. if it was a good idea. Right. So now, I guess right. we will probably all, all of us except Councillor Zondervan, right. and some of the yeah. protesters who actually feel right. that body cams are not a good thing. Why? You know, I. You well, know, that's their argument. 
honestly, I don't really know what their argument against them are other than, well, I mean, for one thing, if you had body cam evidence right away that kind of showed a justifiable action on it by the police office, that would kind of take a lot of wind out of their sails. So well, I suppose- isn't it, isn't it how it's interpreted though? I'm thinking, I watch a lot yeah. of basketball. And so the refs, you know, they go to the monitor and one thinks one thing, one thing, and they keep showing it from different views. So who knows? I mean, you could argue yeah. that too, so. Yeah, I, I think people who think yeah. that um, camera from body cams are absolutely always definitive, really have to think again because right. it's not always exactly. so clear but at and least it's also something. one view it's not many it's not like you have uh abc or cbs photographing it's one exactly exactly yeah. although actually that's not true because if there's more than one officer involved then there may be more than one camera views. angle yeah. yeah all right so exactly well, right I right think so so i i actually idea. think that yeah. that's a good thing um, yeah. There are other things that I hope come out of this, and I know that they're doing this review from this, um, what's the entity Perf. called, Perk, Perf Perf. or something? Perf. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, so it's a national organization that right. actually would, you know, professional. Well recommended, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, who, and I believe actually Christine Elo, our police commissioner last yes. night said, they were the ones who basically authored the the right. basically the protocols right. that they use for their trainings and things currently right. so so the, which is one reason why i think quentin didn't like it because i think he probably saw them as too established or whatever um, yeah and, and there was certainly some of the rhetoric in the in the yeah. press that if you want to call it the press it was it was sort of leaning in that way as well oh, real, what press yeah Any people have I, you know i think in one of those yeah yeah oh, okay. yeah yeah Right. But you know, the, yeah, this one of the problems. It's sort of like cheating on your lab reports. You know, if you <laughs> you start with a conclusion and then yeah. you sort of you fit your rhetoric and your justifications in order to in order to prove your uh, yeah. your conclusion. You're so, not talking about the Joan Benaki article, are you? Because I saw that you commented on that. I did. I did. I, I didn't I like her at it. all. Yeah. I, I generally like her, but I didn't. I didn't like the. I, I felt like she doesn't know everything. Well, you know, yeah. that's one of the problems that can happen yeah. with reporters who are not particularly She's not close a reporter. To She's an opinion. Opinion writer. writer. But what happens is somebody drops a dime. Right. And, and, and they look into it and they, and they take a, yeah. Yeah. There was, there was one Boston Globe opinion writer some years ago who, back when there was some big controversy in Central Square, who wrote mm -hmm. this sort of scathing article. Oh, that's and, homeless. And then I remember because she was there. Um, you know, at the meeting, and the only people who were talking to her were people who were really radicalized. And right. at one point, I turned at yeah. her and scowled yeah. at her, and yeah. she flipped me the bird. Oh my god! Right, yeah. I was very pleased to see about within a, about two years later, she got canned from her job with the Boston Globe. Oh wow! You know, okay. I don't actually even remember her name now. But, I think uh, I, I'm not. I think I know what yeah. you're talking about, but yeah, uh, yeah. But, you know, yeah, yeah but anyway, my, my whole point is, yeah. is that sometimes an opinion writer or even a reporter yeah. goes in there and basically is just getting fed information from sure. uh, from a particular group. So they, you know, and and, and they so don't it, have to be balanced because you know, they, they're not obliged yeah. to be balanced. Right. Exactly. And I and I think that's kind of what you're sort of seeing mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there are some rather naive young uh, Harvard Crimson reporters give oh, right. their account yeah. of things and they're right. kind of like, yeah. like, what? Yeah. You know, um, so it's, um, you know, anyway, I just think it's kind of unfortunate. Now, now, other things that are they're not yet part of any reports or any mm -hmm. city council orders, or yeah. maybe peripherally they were, you know, is that there is this question of um, having, uh, I guess you call them non-lethal uh, oh. means at your disposal right. Right. whenever there's an incident. and. Yeah. I've, I've, so I've, it has been explained to me that it is not so, so easy to do that, you know, because yeah. by the time you've packed on your, your service weapon, the uh, taser, oh, it's a lot of equipment, beanbag, this, this, that, you're already uh, packing 30 pounds taser. worth of stuff. Oh, I know. And then, know. you know, now, now let's, oh, you should carry like a circus net so you can throw it over somebody who's running but, at but you. But I would like to know why a taser could not be used instead of a sponge. You know, I think it, it might, it might have been. I mean, they uh, can be. They can they can do damage, but at least they do. Well, stop they, but a the right. Well, not they don't necessarily stop no. a person. And, I thought it's like um, an electric shock. Or it is, and you know, and as long as you, uh, 
I, I mean, as long as you deploy it exactly right, uh, but it doesn't always stop the person. And so it's- I think in this case, it probably would have because he's- I, in, in this particular, yeah. right. In this particular case, the person was shirtless uh, and, you know- and Or it was, a big mattress, like I told you, I did that once with the right. patient. With the, but right, right. I, but I know, but, I, this is all after but the, the thought. The, the problem yeah. is, is that, you know, they don't, have the a, they don't have a big mattress that are sitting there, right? But- <laughs> But and I don't know what the I'm answers laughing. are. I I will I will be pleased to read whatever yeah. kind of possible recommendations come out of this. I there apologize are, for laughing if people think I'm not taking it seriously. No, I think we're all taking it very seriously. I know, but I feel like everything I say, I have to be careful. To, you know, <laughs> well, really I we to... this and in, in Cambridge these days, uh, believe right. me, I know you can yeah, you can true. say something offhandedly and then you know develop know. an enemy who will be after you for the rest I, of your life. So yeah, I know what all the right. hell, right? <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, yeah. you know, water off a duck's back. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, you know, when you're sort of a sort of a public well, figure. Yeah, and from. we're opi we're opinion people. I mean, we're yeah, opinions. yeah, and they're always going to on facts, hopefully. Yeah, and they're and they're always going to be jackasses out there who are yeah. sort of going to just go at you because they can. So sure. yeah, you live with it, right? It's not a big deal. Yeah. But you know, All there right. may be some other things that we're not yet even yeah, speaking that about that know. may be alternatives. Right. Um, you know, another oh, well, speaking thing. Speaking of is, alternatives, well, that's the other big piece of this. Right. Well, the other thing too is is that, and I'm I would if if I was there and could ask all the questions, I would ask, well, yeah. what are the possible changes in protocols when you're talking about a person wielding a knife even if it's a big mean knife yeah. versus a firearm you know because firearms still a it's still i know a i know weapon. i know but the thing is is that firearm you can you can kill somebody from a distance with a knife you still have to have some proximity so there may be you things could throw like it. You could throw a knife you could throw a knife true but um you you know the ability to evade may be more you know, you know, basically yes. just, you yes. know, in other words, protect the surroundings. If there's a right. kindergarten next door, you make sure nobody goes near there, that. Well, there was a daycare center next. I know, to, I, mean, there I know. Was a child care center next to where this happened. Exactly. And it, which really yeah. complicates things, right? Exactly. But, so but they, I, I'm, yeah. I'm presuming that when, by the time the this analysis and report comes back, they'll say, well, you know, you, you know, I, I'm kind of, pretty confident they'll say you know the Cambridge Police Department has actually been doing pretty well they've been yeah. way ahead of most police departments but here are a few good ideas and a few yeah. good suggestions well, I hope so yeah it. and and I think there are people in, within the police department who will go oh that's actually a pretty good idea let's let's mm -hmm. try that let's put that yeah. in our uh yeah. you know our bag of uh, of options yeah. and um you know and then you know and and let's also let's be clear the the police officer involved shootings in Cambridge are are rarer than city charters yeah <laughs> we have had four city charters in the history of cambridge and i believe we've had four officer involved shootings in the last century or something so yeah. it's yeah. not it's a real rarity yeah. and i think the fact that it's such a rarity probably mm -hmm. means we're probably spending yeah. um maybe putting more emphasis on this. I mean, yeah. I'm not in any way trying to diminish the importance of the topic, right. but, uh, but you know, you, when you actually look at the reality, it's, it's a, this is, we're talking yeah. about a, a complete anomaly here. So, I know. I, I think, uh, always the, not a bottom line, but um, the reality is that police do wear uniforms. They carry a lot of equipment and they carry a gun and that gun is always on them. And I think that, the idea of an armed force in your community, especially as younger people, I think that's what is setting a lot of people off. And, and they could be the nicest people and they do the nicest things, but they still have to carry that equipment. So I think the idea of having an alternative response team, which they do to some little extent now, but now they're expanding it with the community safety and maybe contracting in addition to heart. And that's a whole other thing that, you know, to go through well i it's mean a good idea in other words you respond uh and you have backup but you have to work with the police and i think again mark brought that up again with his uh remarks and brought up cahoots again which is always of course they've been around for over 30 years they work with the police and i think that's the big point that has to be dealt with with heart and the city which they say they're working on but there's got to be you know that's I, you know i point, think right right um, most people, 
I, I, I'm going to go out on a small limb here and suggest uh -oh. even most people within the Cambridge Police Department yeah. are perfectly comfortable with the concept of having alternative police response and right. having. Um, oh, absolutely. They don't want to go. They don't right. have to deal with a lot of these mental. I mean, they've said that. Right. But, they but, say but, that across the country in many places. But at least at least yeah. the Cambridge police who I talk to also take yeah. their job very seriously. Absolutely. And they say they do not want people going no. into positions of, no. where they're putting themselves in jeopardy. You no, know, like a good a good uh, example. And it's happened where police have been killed uh, or, uh, is domestic dis dispute calls. Now, how do you deal with that? Right. And you know, my brother, and especially a, when you don't know if there's a weapon in the house. Right. My brother is a police officer in New York City mm -hmm. was yeah. he's, he's retired now. But okay. uh, he said and you can ask any police officer says the yeah. the potentially the most scary and dangerous call mm -hmm. you're going to get for, most, is, for the most is, part is domestic calls. Exactly. And exactly. Just, when no, you, even when you, even it. when you're yeah. thinking you're doing everything exactly right. Right. And defending somebody, that very person right. you're defending may be the person yeah. who then comes at you with a weapon because they, you know, you're intervening with a spouse and then loyalty to a spouse, even an abuse. Well, that's spouse. one situation, but often it's when um, they barricade themselves or they can't get in or they don't know it's and then they open the and they shoot right out. I mean, they right. don't even get that. That's far. right. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's tricky. And they, it's and they don't tricky. necessarily know the interior of the building, the layout exactly. or anything like that. So there is far more, um, yeah. un far many more unknowns and potential dangers exactly. in those types yes. of calls than most. Right. So, you know, so that's why I, I do find some of the rhetoric that you hear yeah. about alternative police response that makes yeah. it all sound as though, well, we're just going to send a bunch of nice community people in to go and have a nice little quiet conversation well, or whatever. The way I get it is that it seems like, uh, and I think Mark brought this up too, is that in the end, it's going to be people that don't trust the police that will call heart. You know, so, I'm, you know I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned that... Yeah. We may very well, if we, to whatever degree we go down this the road, systems, yeah, uh, that we basically end up with like two parallel yeah, police that, departments or responses. Well, so that, they, you couldn't call it; they, they're not police departments. Two parallel response teams. Right, but I mean, I heard that even yeah. in the wake of this incident in January, yeah, that people who were uh, advocates for Heart were actually yeah. going around and basically posting their phone numbers saying. Don't call the police, call us. And yeah, so they were already, even before there was any I, official connection with the city, they were presenting yeah. themselves I know. essentially and, as a parallel police department. I know, and yet they, not police. And, but, it, but in some of what was said last night was that um, they themselves have said they're not going to be fully you know, ready till September. So what's the good of calling them now? You know, it's just, right. it, it's very confusing. And I think you don't want it to be confusing to the public. And you want a clear message to the public, and I think that's what the city's working on. So, um, well, I'm. I hope they can kind of figure hope, something yeah. out here. Yeah. Um, I'm. I, and I'm, but I will. I will say my own opinion when I even yeah. you know you can hear forty people show up at public comment talking about how marvelously trained and you know ready to go the particular if, uh, people who are affiliated with this heart program and they've had five hundred hours of training and I'm thinking to myself well. Is that what 500 total of everybody involved? I don't, I'm not yeah. in the slightest way convinced yeah. that yeah. this particular group um, has adequate training in the measure that they seem to be claiming. Well, you know what? I think if they get a contract, I would hope that whoever awards a contract to them will vet this, will figure it out. Right. We'll and interview you know, the people on this, on, on their staff. Right. You know, and uh, and let's just hope let's hope something like that shakes out. Again, I say I don't. It's not that people, including myself, are opposed yeah. to having alternatives to no, no. uniform police, but you know, I, I do think you do. You have to ensure the safety of the responder. Right. And, and I and well. I and I will bring up. I mean, this has been brought up that in cahoots, the partner. I mean, maybe it's changed. It was the White Bird Clinic. In other words, it was an established clinic with uh, trained social workers. Blah blah blah. You know. So where Hart is in to commend them, they're, they're trying to do it from scratch, but I don't know what that training is involved. They've only been around for what, a year and a half? So I, I don't know. I did, I'm just saying, in, in Paul Toner's letter, I mean, in Simmons, uh, there could be another entity that say, hey, we want to get in on this. So who knows? Yeah, I don't know. yeah. I mean, certainly just from a 
a public process point of view, I sure. think they at least have to make sure it's done. Exactly. Are they the square. best out there to contract services to? Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. yeah so, okay. So, all right. So let's finish up this segment with what? Are we just going to, is there anything more to say about that? I guess. Um, I don't think there really is. I, I mean, as, as I say, there's, uh, there are people protesting right now. Uh, I, well, I, yeah. I, you know, I, uh, this, you know, having to do with the Faisal killing, but I, I think that the uh, that it is just the nature of protests this way that to whatever degree they, I mean, and it is unfortunate to have to say this, but to whatever degree the city manager then has a meeting with them, yeah. uh, if they are in fact going in there having already decided that they are going to be dissatisfied with what the manager whatever. has to say, yeah. they have now become empowered to say that by doing what we do and shutting things down, we get lots of attention and we get, you know, we are now respected as a force yeah. to be reckoned with. You know what? And then it, yeah. it may only get worse. Yeah, but you know, they're, they're just the entity. And meanwhile, the city has been meeting with a lot of the heart people. So I think that they can't say they haven't been doing that stuff. So I think this other group, they don't have any cachet really in this community, right? I mean, uh, they're not right. like, I just feel like that's not, I know. I, I think mean, they'll I, be listened to, and they'll be said, "This is what we're doing." And if they don't like it, so no, I, I've, protesting. Yeah. I've um, I've witnessed more than my share of yeah. protest movements in Cambridge, yeah. where okay. six months after the fact, they just basically just dried up and blew away. Well, they you know? they went they went back home, or they graduated, or right, they, whatever. yeah, I don't know. yeah. So whether it was the All homes, right, we'll the yeah. big protests over the homes project in Central Square twenty plus years ago. Within a few years, none of those people were anywhere to be seen. Yeah, yeah. So okay. you know that yeah. may be the case. Uh, you know, so now I, I don't know. I mean, some of the proponents of Hart also have a little bit of a track record of being rhetorically very anti-police, and I right, think well, but that, I think that but I navigating think that's tempered, that's and I think there's been some separation between what's going on with this group and them. And I think yeah. even Kathy. Hunt All right, so we're going to have to take a break here. Okay, for, but we'll, we'll be see back you in the next in segment. All three right. Minutes. It's Cambridge Inside Out. All right, bye.